You might be sitting right next to one. <laughs> On the other hand, you may be sitting next to your husband, so you know he's not an angel. Angels play a really big part in the Christmas story. Luke 2 and verse 8. Shepherds were in the fields outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord, one, appeared among them. And the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were badly frightened. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. I just said. This morning, that, that really, those two words, three words, are for a number of people here this morning, don't be afraid. That's what God came to tell us, what these angels came to tell these shepherds. This is a little bit of going off and I just sense that. Yeah. You need to come against fear in the name of Jesus. Of course, God has not given us the spirit of fear. So if fear comes, it's not from the Lord. Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem. You'll find a baby lying in a manger wrapped snugly in cloth. Suddenly... The angel was joined by a vast host of other angels, the armies of heaven, praising God. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. The Christmas story is absolutely full of angels. So gets Zechariah the priest, he's the first one who meets an angel in the temple in Jerusalem. And then the angel Gabriel visits Mary at home in where? How long have you been going to church? Where? <laughs> Dear Lord, help us. Nazareth. And then Joseph's on the, next on the list. And how, many, how many visits does Joseph get from an angel? I'll give you a clue. Three, that's excellent. And now these shepherds. So exactly who or what are angels? The word angel simply means messenger of God. Angels are far stronger and more powerful than humans, says 2 Peter 2 and verse 11. Their strength is great. Psalm 103 verse 20 says, Praise the Lord, you angels, you mighty ones, who carry out his plans, listening for each of his commands. Yes, praise the Lord, you armies of angels, who serve him and do his will. And so angels, they exist in heaven. They exist in the spirit realm, which is a level higher than the physical universe. And there are different kinds of angels. There's cherubims and seraphims. There's archangels. And there's also the angel of the Lord. And he's just appeared to these shepherds. Their numbers are very, very large. If you remember, I'm going to ask you to do some maths in a moment. So just switch on your maths brain. So a Roman legion had 6,000 men. And then when Jesus is arrested before his crucifixion in Gethsemane, he tells Peter, my father will put at my disposal more than six legions of angels. So how many angels is that? 72,000. That's excellent. I wonder, I wonder if those same angels that were promised later were all here. Appearing to these, to these shepherds, 72,000 mighty and jelly beings praising God. How fabulous was that, wasn't it? And their activity is marvelous. Listen to this. Isaiah 6 verse 2. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they cover their faces. With two they cover their feet. And with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. And then lastly, that's not the end of the sermon, it's just the last of the list little bit. Um, it's not that brief, you know. Lastly, their appearance was often brilliant and dazzling. At the resurrection, 28 verse 2, there was a violent earthquake. 
For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. I've been a pastor for over 40 years and I've heard lots of stories in my time. Some I believed, some I didn't. This morning, I want to tell you two stories that I did believe. And these are stories about angels. So a Christian lady is at an international airport with a young daughter. She's just got 10 minutes to catch her connecting flight. And she's very confused and she's overwhelmed by it all. And she's not certain where to go. And suddenly a guy steps up and says, let me help you, please. And he picks up a case and he says, follow me. She's not even told him where she's headed. But she follows him, struggling to keep pace with this great big fella. And with minutes to spare, she reaches the flight gate. And she hands over her boarding card to the stewardess that's waiting there. And she turns around to thank the guy. And he's gone. And the stewardess said, I didn't see anybody with you. And she boards the plane. An angel? I knew the lady that told that story. I believed her. Were any of you angels in the school nativity? Yeah. Or maybe your kids have been angels. Well, for a short time anyway. (laughs) You know. There's some great stories from the kids about angels. Gregory, age five. I only know the name of two angels, Hark and Harold. Olive, age nine, everybody's got it wrong. Angels don't wear halos anymore. I forget why, but the scientists are working on it. (laughs) Mitchell, seven, my guardian angel helps me with maths, but he's not much good at science. (laughs) Henry, age eight, it's not our Henry, but this is another Henry, age eight. Angels don't eat, but they drink milk from holy cows. (laughs) Christmas story's full of angels. And the Christmas angel, the one, the angel of the Lord, was joined by the armies of heaven. Listen, please. I believe, and the Bible teaches, that angels are still around us here in the 21st century. Do you believe that? I believe that. They're on the Lord's business. Delivering, directing, protecting, ministering to us. If you go home and type into Google, angels... You get 48 million responses. Now, I've not been through all of them. But I want to tell you there's some absolute rubbish in there about angels. It's complete nonsense. In fact, whoever posted some of this stuff is aware with the fairies, not with the angels. It's crazy. But there is a supernatural dimension to the Christian life. Always has been, and there always will be, and there always should be. That is what I want to take, I want you to take home with you today. If somebody said, what did Pastor John speak about today? The answer is angels. Because there is a supernatural dimension to the Christian life. There always has been, and there always will be. We really have to open our eyes and our hearts to it. Because I think in this very cynical age in which we live, even Christians, we've lost the sight of the ministry of angels and the supernatural. We've become very, very cynical. Don't allow cynicism of our world to rob you of the awe and the wonder of the supernatural. And Christmas is all about the supernatural. You see, if Christmas is just about spending money, putting more and more on the plastic, try to keep pace with everything that's going on offer, then we could easily miss the angels. And you'll miss the miraculous. And you'll miss the Christ child. And you'll miss the awe and the wonder. You know that when it hits you? And sometimes you can hardly speak. And sometimes you're on the verge of tears. And sometimes you're just taken with all that we're in because of Jesus. We're so full of awe we can't speak. Next week I'm talking about shepherds. There couldn't be a bigger contrast between shepherds and angels. Could they? They're both there at the first advent. You see, as Christians, God calls us to embrace the natural shepherds. 
but also to embrace the supernatural angels, the ordinary and the extraordinary, counting sheep and encountering angels. It's all there in the first Christmas, and it's still here. Here's my second story. There was a man called Dave in a pub in West Brom. And he's drinking alone when he's joined by a stranger. This stranger then tells him his whole life story. From the very start, right up to that present day. This guy tells Dave stuff that no one else except he knew or could ever know. The man in the pub spoke to him in a North American Indian dialect. Which is unusual for West Brom, isn't it? Because they struggle to speak, um, yes. <laughs> Amazingly, Dave had researched Indian dialects as part of his thesis for university. So he understand this guy, this total stranger, speaking to him in a North American Indian dialect. So he went to get another drink because he needed it to get his head around what's going on in this pub in West Brom. And when he comes back from the bar to his seat, the man's gone, disappears. And when he asks the barman where the man has gone, the barman said, you've been alone for the whole time. Dave knew that he had encountered an angel. So we went to find a local clergyman. Some of us knew that local clergyman. His name was Pastor Dave Skelton. He was a good man. And he led Dave to know Jesus and to give his life to the Lord Jesus. And so Dave became a Christian. Some years later, he became a church leader. And we knew him well, didn't we? He was an amazing guy. Angels. They were there in the beginning. When God created the heavens and the earth, then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? While the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. They'll be there at the end after the resurrection of the dead. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Angels. I would just love you to go home from this service, not particularly today, but in the next day or two, just read the Christmas story again. Some of you have read it so many times. Let me make a suggestion. Read it in a different Bible translation to what you normally use because you're so used to reading your Bible, you know every word, and it doesn't spark you anymore. Get a different translation. Or read it in the message. It's interesting in the message. So with fresh eyes and an open mind, read the story again. And... Allow the ministry of angels to lift your eyes to another dimension. Not the fear of pandemic and COVID and Omicron and what's going to happen. To allow your eyes to lift to another dimension, which is the dimension of God the Holy Spirit. Bless the Lord. To lift your eyes from the everyday to the eternal. To lift your eyes from the ordinary. You know, do I wear a mask? Do I take a mask? No, no. Start to think about the extraordinary of this time. From the natural to the supernatural. To the awe and wonder of God himself that created this universe, putting on my skin. So that he could become my friend. And my saviour. And then you'll, you'll receive the peace and the goodwill that these Angels announced. Angels. On assignment. Still about today. Ministering to people. Yes? Next week, it's the shepherds.